In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you the difference between applying color lookup tables called LUTs in PowerDirector and applying them in ColorDirector. They basically do the same thing, but the way they do it is quite different. So let's assume that we're going to use it in PowerDirector, or maybe that's the only program we own. So to apply a LUT in PowerDirector, let's take this clip here, this inside shot, and assume I want to apply a LUT. There are several ways I can do that. First of all, I'll click on the clip. Then I'll click on the effects icon. That's the fourth one from the left in the upper left corner in the new interface. And then in my, the My Content Categories, we have one called Color LUT. I'll click on that. This gives me several other subcategories of LUTs. I have one called White Tones, for example. I have one called Warm and Cozy. And it will show me all the ones that are available, whether I've downloaded them or not. These are part of my subscription. So everything you have will be here. Now, if there's one that I have not yet applied or brought into my own computer for my subscription, it will have a down arrow at the lower right corner of the thumbnail. To bring it into my system, all I need to do is click on it. It will load it, and then it will preview it on the main preview screen. It does not actually change the clip. You notice at the end, it reverts back to the normal color. So if I want to try another one, and if you look carefully across the thumbnail, you see a white line that moves, showing you as it moves from frame to frame, how that entire clip looks with that particular LUT applied. So I can move from one category to another. I can take anything I like and click on it, and it will apply the LUT visually, but not effectively on that particular clip, and then reset when it's done. So that's an interesting way to do that. If I want to take the LUT and actually use it, all I need to do is take it and drag it and drop it on the clip, and it will apply the LUT in the, to the clip in the timeline. Once it's there, I can make a couple of changes. With it highlighted, I'll click on the Effect button above the timeline, and here I can change the strength of it. I can turn it down to zero, which basically turns it off completely. Or I can make it as strong or weak as I like by using the slider. If I want to remove the LUT, all I need to do is click on the minus button, and it will take it out. And you notice I don't have my information icon here anymore. So that is the very basics of applying a LUT in the new interface in PowerDirector. Now, what about ColorDirector? That's a different animal. Let me show you. I'm going to go back to my media room here and get into Color Director. How do you do that? There are several ways. I can simply highlight any clip, and I can right click, and I can click on Edit Video. And since I have Color Director, I can click on Edit in Color Director. Another option, if you have Color Director, is highlight the clip and click on Edit. And then I can be in the video under either Tools or Color, and the bottom option in either case will be Edit in Color Director. It doesn't matter which one you use. So when you click on the Edit in Color Director, it will open Color Director. Let's do that now. In Color Director, you see I have a similar screen. We have at the very bottom the video that I highlighted. It brought in, notice it didn't bring in everything on that particular clip, only the one that was highlighted. If I'd highlighted more than one, it would have brought multiple clips into Color Director for editing. So right now it brought in the single clip. So I want to edit it. I need to be on the Manual tab. I don't want to be on the Preset tab because there's no uh, access to LUTs there. I want to be on Manual. Then I click on Global Adjustment Tools. Let's click on Color LUT. When I click on that, it will open up this screen called Color Lookup Table Manager. And this actually is how I can control it. I'm going to maximize it so you can see better. And if I look on the left side, I have these subcategories. They look much like they do in PowerDirector, but they operate a little bit differently. So this shows me all of the subcategories that I have loaded into my copy of ColorDirector. If I look in Color Pop, I see I have three. If I look on Bright and Airy, I have one. Now you notice for some reason it only shows you the content of one category at a time. If I have Cyberpunk, here I have one. So this gives me an example. So let's go to Color Pop, 
And what I can do is if I hover my mouse over the thumbnail and you look in the upper left corner, you're going to see an example of what it will look like if I apply that particular LUT. Now, if I want to see it on the big screen on the right, all I need to do is click on it and there I can see it as as if it were applied and I can move through the video frame by frame and see what each frame will look like if I'm applying the LUT to it. And I can click on a different LUT and it will do the same thing. In some ways it isn't, hasn't quite caught up with some of the features of PowerDirector. Now what if I want to use another LUT? Well, there are several that I'm, I have that I've implemented in my copy of PowerDirector that, and others that I haven't. That's what the store is for. Let me click to store. And when I click on store, this gives me a list of all those that are part of my subscription. Now, the important thing to remember is if you download LUTs in PowerDirector and you download LUTs in ColorDirector, it's like two separate programs. They don't share the, the same features. They share the same database, essentially. But if you load it in PowerDirector, it doesn't mean it's loaded in ColorDirector or vice versa. So I have the option to load, let's see the color pop here. And here are all the ones that are available to me. And I can see that I've downloaded 09 and 08. I haven't downloaded 10. Let's download that really quick. And there it is. Here I can control the strength right away, all the way from 0 to 100%. And if I don't want to see any LUTs applied to the, the previous screen here, I click on Reset. And that is my natural version of it without any LUT applied whatsoever. Let's go back to minimizing this a little bit so you can see better compared to the rest of it. So, so I can I can add with the store all the LUTs I want. I can go through each of these categories and subcategories to apply LUTs to my heart's content. And if it has a red dot, it indicates you haven't ever even looked into that subcategory. The once I click on that, the red dot will go away whether I download anything or not. Let's do faded film. So here are the ones available in faded film. And I go back again and now the dot is gone. So the dot basically says, here's something new you haven't even opened up. So that's all it means. So let's take a LUT and apply it. Let's go back to my cool tones. And let's take this one here. And we'll download it. OK, and we can see the preview of it. I'll click on Apply. And now it's applied that to my video clip inside of Color Director. Let's assume I like what it's, where it's at. I can also go back if I want to, to change it again. I can change the strength of it, modify it, and go back and reapply it. Or I can switch to a different lot. But let's say I like this. And then all I need to do is close Color Director. We'll do that. And it takes me back to Power Director. Now you notice in Power Director, we now have our icon here, but it doesn't say LUT. If I click on the video and click on Effect, it says this is a color preset because it basically doesn't treat it as a Power Director tool, but as a Color Director tool. So I can't edit it. I can remove it by clicking on the minus symbol. But I can't change the strength of it. I can't change it to a different LUT. So the two programs do not work together in that way. They're using different engines to apply the LUT to that particular clip. If you want to edit in Color Director, that's a bit about how it works in contrast to how it works inside of PowerDirector.